This tutorial is going to show you how to fix an iPod, iPhone, or iPod Touch that was dropped in water. Now if this happened, it's really no reason to panic. It can be repaired and it can be done with limited experience on working with electronics. What you have to do is you just have to follow along and I'll show you what you have to do. Now the first thing you have to know is, is that water is conductible. Now the trick is if the iPod was immersed in water and I'm hearing many instances how it happens if it slipped out of your pocket and fell into the toilet when it's a washing machine you left it in your clothing or you went to the beach and it was in your bathing suit so you know it, it can happen water is everywhere it's part of life and it could just be dropped in water so the trick is guys is that you gotta get the water out water is very damaging and the reason is is that water is conductible once it falls into the water there's one thing that you should know and listen very carefully. Do not try to turn it on. That is the worst thing that you can do. Make sure that when you take it out from the water, if it fell in the toilet or whatever it went into, if it went into the washing machine, take the iPod and do not try to turn it on see if it works. That's the worst thing you can do because you will short circuit it. If the iPod is off, nothing is happening. There's no electrical cycles in the uh, going on in the logic board so nothing will short circuit the water won't do anything because it's dead if it's turned on then the damage can happen and the short circuiting can occur because of the water that's conducting the circuitry the wrong way so when that happens you just take it out and open the iPod up and then dry the water out now if you already try to turn it on it still could probably be fixed. You may have damaged something, but it's possible that the water didn't get into a certain area where it short-circuited anything. And sometimes, depending on if it didn't cause any, dam any damage, you can basically just remove the water and it should work. If you open up your iPod, you'll see something called a logic board. In this logic board, you have electrical connections, embedded wires, that basically tell the iPod what to do. If those wires meet each other where they're not supposed to meet, it will short-circuit burn out or just won't work. Now what water does it takes the place of these wires and connects them where they're not supposed to be connected and that's what causes it not to function or to short circuit. So the trick is you gotta get the water out. Now to get the water out you have to open up the iPod. Now some iPods open differently and it's really not that difficult if you just follow the instructions that you have to do to open the, the iPod. Now for the iPod Classic they usually give you a couple of tools like I'm showing up on the screen here or you can use a guitar pick and you just run it across the seams of the iPod between the chrome backing and the top and that will open it up. Now I have a video on how to replace a battery on an iPod that'll show you how to open the iPod, the iPod Classic. And basically, if, you, if you're trying to open the iPhone or iPod Touch, this one opens with screws. So basically, uh, there are a lot of tutorials on how to open these. It's basically labeled how to replace an iPhone or iPod Touch screen. And that'll show you how to open up the device and get to the logic board because that's the key. That's where you have to get the water out. Of course, everywhere else. Now for the iPod Nano, it's basically similar to the iPod, similar to the iPod Classic. Uh, you basically have to open uh, the area between the seams, the backing, the chrome backing, and the top part, which is where the click wheel is. And you use either the tools they give you to change the battery or a guitar pick should work. A little bit more difficult with the Nano, it's more tighter, but you should be able to get it. And once that's opened up, that's the first most important step. The next thing you have to do is take a blow dryer, hair dryer, and hold it, I would say, around three feet away from the iPod or iPhone for about five minutes and just run it across liberally. Just keep it away, not too close, because the heat can cause damage if it's very close. So just leave a, far, uh, a reasonable distance, around three feet away. And just go over and basically try to dry it out as best you can and then I would say after that leave it next to an open window for about a day and then after that check the device 
inspect it carefully and look for any water make sure the moisture is gone that's the key here once the iPod or iPhone is completely dry close it back up properly and it should power on and work fine so there you have it guys how to fix an iPod or iPhone that was dropped in water uh, please rate this video and comment and thank you for tuning in